It's time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old wind to change. I hear the spirit say it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine. I hear the Spirit say it's time.
the King of Glory come in. Open up and let the light in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Marcella. My God, my God. Just vamp that some more. Hallelujah. Come on, give me a little volume. Give me a little volume. Come on. Put your hands together and worship the Lord. Give them a good worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Dove Church. We, we thank God for his goodness. In the last song, she said, open up the windows. Yes. Let in the light. Yes. Open up the windows, let in the light. Yes. Come right in on your people's praises. Yes. Let the king of glory in. Yes. Let the king of glory in. And so we, we bless you today and thank you for looking in on us. As usual, we thank you for your support, your prayers, your comments, and we ask you to like and subscribe and share. We boost these broadcasts out, and uh, 
we hear from you and we thank God for you. Thank God for those of you that sponsor us in special ways and we love you for that. Thank God for this church that supports this ministry. And so as usual, we're ready to receive the word of God today. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand, repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we exhort you today. Minister to us and through us. Help us to speak as an oracle of you today. Bring clarity and understanding to this word message. And Father, we thank you that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. I'm getting a little feedback. I'm going to talk from the subject today. You may need to move next door. You may need to move next door. And as we start this lesson series, Paul is at the end of his second missionary journey. And his final place after leaving Athens, he's now in Corinth, Greece. And as we look at him, when he gets to Greece, to Corinth, he meets a, a couple who are in a similar trade as he. And they are tent makers, and their name is Priscilla and Aquila. I believe that they were pastors in churches in the Corinth area. Paul went to stay with them because, as I said, they were tent makers. And tent makers were, was really another name for people who work leather because they made the tents out of leather. So when you were a tent maker, you were a skilled person because in those days, while many people lived in the city, there were many more that were uh, better ones or they lived in desert places or outreaching places and they lived in tents. So their home was a tent and it was like the, the mobile home of this day, and they could wrap it up and fold it up and place it on the, the sides of donkeys or camels and take it with them and then unfurl it, uh, stake it, and, and that's where they resided for the night. And many, many families for, for, for decades and centuries, they lived as Bedouins in tents. They still do. And so we find uh, uh, Paul down in Corinth, and, 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 and Paul's goal, going to Corinth, as with every other city he had been to, was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To introduce the gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as establish a church. And, and everywhere he went, he established a church. Now, he had just left Athens, and he's in Corinth. But each city is different. Corinth was already an old city. It, it, it was a commercial center. It had two harbors, which means that it did a lot of imports and exports. It was a very wealthy city. It had a lot going on, a lot of culture, a lot of everything, including a lot of sin. Corinth was especially uh, 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 noted for being 
a sexually immoral place. In classical Greek, to act like a Corinthian meant to practice fornication, and a Corinthian companion meant a prostitute. This sexual immorality was permitted under the widely popular worship of Aphrodite, which is the, the sex god, also known as Venus, the goddess of fertility and sexuality. Whereas in, in Athens, the, the statues were to the unknown god, and they had gods to everything, and, and it was a place of culture. In, in, in Corinth, it was a place of sexual promiscuity of all types. Because the city was a harbor city, and it was great for import, that meant a lot of people came in and a lot of people came out. So generally they drug in stuff and they drug out stuff. Corinth was a rough place. It's rough. And so we find here that God would, would, would send Paul in this missionary journey to a place this rough called Corinth. Just when we thought Athens dealing with the, the intellectuals was a rough place, when he got down to Corinth, he seen something he had never seen before. It blew his mind. And, 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 and as we get into the lesson, Paul had to get special encouragement to minister in Corinth because of what he encountered there. Some places God sends you challenges the very essence of what you are made of. It's not easy, it's not comfortable, but it's of his purpose and it's according to his will. He has destined you to do it. So you go down to old Corinth and wonder how in the you know what, did, how did I get here? Amen. Amen. Have you ever been in some situations and wondered, how did I get here? I, didn't, I had no idea of getting here. But here I sit in the middle of something that I didn't intend to be a part of. Come on, come on. Don't act like we too different from Corinth. Because if I thought about a modern day Corinth, it's not a city, but it's the internet. Ah. Uh, where everything is leashed. Every, every, every base thing, every low down thing that you want to get involved, you can do it there. And it's capturing people and addicting people by the drove faster than any harbor town named Corinth did in ancient Greece. Are y'all out there? Greece, uh, Corinth was so rough that, that when Paul wrote his letter to the Romans from Corinth, he gave a mirror of what Corinth was about because he said this same thing is affecting every area of the empire because it's in Corinth, it's everywhere. So he wrote a letter ahead to Rome to let him know this is in the earth. Ooh, are y'all out there? It was full of Jews, but it was also full of Gentiles. You think if there was a godly presence there, it would have weighed something. But when the godly people become, become entwined in the government of the country, then they lose, they lose their positioning. And you become more political than godly, but you still wear a God name. God bless America. We might as well go and call it out. This is what Paul, in reaction to what he was looking at in Corinth, this is what he wrote in, 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 in Romans 1, 22 to, to 32. New King James, only the scriptures coming up. Romans 1. 22 to 32. Use your paper Bibles. When you have it, say amen. amen. Acts, Romans. 
I, I didn't say ask Romans. I said act Romans. <laughs> I'm going to show you what Paul did when people didn't hear him too. Because you have another group. They're by the church, but they don't hear. They don't want to hear. When you have it, say amen. Does it begin with the word and? Okay, one person said yes. And? Hmm. It doesn't? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me let me let me let me let me, let me find it. Cuz I'll take a piece out and put it in my notes. But that's good. Stay stay right there with me. Oh, uh, 20 23 starts with and. 22 starts with 22 starts with professing smarty pants. 22 says, professing to be wise, they became fools. This, this, is, this is Paul talking about Corinth in a letter to the Romans. Here comes 23. And changed the glory of the what? God into an image made like corruptible man. The first thing that happens with men when they want to, to do their own thing, they have to change the glory of God to something else that fits. They have to change it. This is how we do it in this day. Hey, Jew. I just had a grandbaby visit. An image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animal and, 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 and creeping things. Here is what Paul says there. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. In the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Let me stop there. He gave them up. He gave them up because they had already by stepped his will for them, so he gave them up. In other words, God said, I'm not overriding something I gave you was the will and choice. I gave you up. And, and, and this is what he did there. Uh, uh, and he said, uh, 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 who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Paul, in writing this letter, he said, I got to stop and bless God forever right now. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. To do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, all of these are hangout buddies. When one shows up, the other one is there. Covetousness, maliciousness, 
full of envy. You jealous of everything and everybody. Murder. Strife. What's the next one? What's the next one? As if all the rest of them weren't evil-mindedness. This must be a special evil-mindedness. They are whisperers. Woo! Backbiters. Haters of God. Violent. Proud. You, you know, some folk is so wrong, they proud to be wrong. I like being the way I am. This is the way I am. And this has become the hallmark statement to people that think this is the way I am. Don't judge me. But believers have a right to judge between right and wrong. How do you know when you're wrong if you don't judge it as wrong? How do you know it's right if you don't judge it as right? We're in a convoluted situation here where, where a lie has become popular to do. And some people have been strongly convinced it's a lie. The reason why a lie is popular to operate in is because the lie serves us. Ooh. It serves our purpose. Even if in our heart of hearts we don't believe it, it helps get something done. But the word is still right. A liar won't tarry in his sight. So even though they seem to be getting away with it, keep watching. Are, are y'all out there? Is this in your Bible? I'm, 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 I'm just preaching the Bible. I'm the mailman today. Proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. All of that. Was, was vibrant, active, and moving in the Corinthian, in the city of Corinth. So Paul sent a, a warning ahead to all the other churches after his involvement in Corinth and said, this is what's in the earth. Watch out. Watch out. Now I understand what my exhortation was about before this message today. About watching your children. Because the last line, disobedient to parents. Whew. My God. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God. That those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. People who do wrong find people to approve. You can find anybody to approve anything you want to approve. Generally, people, folks' best friend is the one that approves everything that they want to do that's wrong. When a true best friend will tell you, I'm not down with that and neither should you be. Ooh. Those are the friends you need to shake. But that's just his mirror of Corinth. But he was still sent to Corinth to do a job. I don't want you to get lost in the smoke screen. The disobedience, the vile, the sexual misconduct. What Paul had could handle all of that. That's why he was sent there. But when he was sent there, he found himself in the middle of it. He said, oh my God, I got to write about this. Many times again, God does not send you to places of circumstance or convenience, but places to, to work out his kingdom objective. Your tribulation, your trouble, your problems sometimes have come 
to work out God's kingdom objective through your life. You may not understand it. You may not want to deal with it, but that's the way he wants it to get done. Sometime before he can get you to be pressed out over lies, he has to put you in the press. And we don't like to go into the press because we think we're ready just like we are. But he got to get the full oil out of you. Anybody felt like he's, you getting some oil out of me now. How many of you said, I'm not going to make it? <laughs> How many of you thought this was it? You did a, a, a red fox number and said, Elizabeth, I'm coming home. You, 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 this is it. Some of y'all look at me, y'all don't even know who red fox was. Or no. <laughs> Whole series. Go to the internet and look it up here. Yeah. But the point is, is that sometimes that press is to get the fuller oil because he needs the oil out of your life to help you do what he's called you to do. And sometimes you're not ready to do it. Even though he called you to do it, you ain't ready when you first get called. Acts 18. Four through five. Let's back it up and let's talk about this story. And I'm going to read, explain, read, explain, pull the emphasis out. I know this is a tight one, but it's a right one. Acts 18, 4 through 5. We have it? Amen. Does it start with and? Yes. All right. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Let me stop at that word. Reason, uh, because that word reason makes us think that, that we set our thinking to God or above God. And, and it reasoned, and he reasoned, it means that, that he sat down and he broke the bread of life open. He broke the word open to them, and he gave it to them piece at a time, winning them over with saying, this is what God would have you know. This is what God would have you know. So, so, so they, they, they got a piece, then they discussed it, then they got another piece. So that's what he meant by reasoning. All right? And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. So that was sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. That was the Sabbath. And persuaded both Jews and Greeks. Because the Jews were at the synagogue that once a week time on the Sabbath. Then Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia. He had left them in Macedonia. Paul was compelled by the Spirit. That's a good place to be. You have to be led of the Spirit. Even in your preaching, it compels you to preach a certain way, to say a certain thing. He was compelled of the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the... Jesus is the who? Paul was effective. The Greeks present in the synagogue were Gentiles, interested in the message. Paul shows us that his call and ministry was focused on proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. You have to stay focused on your call. Church work can become busy work that does everything except minister Jesus Christ. 
So you have to make sure you are focused on your call. Then Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia. What was the reason why they came down? They brought an offering to Paul in Corinth, who until he got the offering, he was working with Priscilla and Aquila making tents. He made an earning because he didn't want anybody to think that he was living off of them. But when, but when Silas and Timothy got there, they brought him the offering from the previous churches to say, Paul, all we want you to do is preach. We know you make tents, but your preaching is better than your tent making. So we see all through scripture, it is important to finance the gospel. Amen? And so, moving just a little bit longer, Paul was compelled by the Spirit. Acts 18, 6-8. You don't have to go far, just read down. And it said there, he's teaching in the synagogue. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, they spoke against God. He said, I've had enough. He shook his garments and said to them, your blood be upon your own heads. Now he's talking to the Jews, basically. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Sometimes the people you sent to don't hear you. And Paul said, good. He got up and he shook the dust off his feet. I'm done with you. And, and it said there, and he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshiped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Sometime you got to move next door. When they won't hear you in your house, it's time to go next door. Is it in your Bible? Yeah. Some of you looking at me, I've never seen that before. <laughs> then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue. Everybody say ruler of the synagogue. Yeah. What made Crispus famous is the next word. Believed on the Lord with all his household. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. That's when Paul moved next door. Crispus heard him. Him and his household who were Gentile believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and they all got saved. But there were the Jews over next door. It had to shake the dust. Now, Paul's mission was the same as Jesus. Jesus was sent to the lost house of Israel, to the Jews. And Paul says it in Romans 1.17, what he was sent to do. 1.16. Romans 1.16. When you have it, say amen. amen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the who? Jews, Jew who? Jews and also for the Greek, the Gentile. So Paul's mission was the same. It was for the Jew first. But because they didn't hear him, he shook the dust off their feet. Because of rejection. He said, I want every semblance of rejection off of me. And sometimes you think that it's your mission to constantly go after people over and over and over again. It is anti-scripture. Ooh, I just messed you up. 
Because you keep going to a knucklehead that don't want to hear. Maybe if you leave him home, leave him alone as the prodigal father, the prodigal son's father did. When he came to himself, he came back home. Uh, that's not your mission to continue to shake. What did I tell you? Get the, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? If they reject you, shake the dust. And go next door. Because there might be a Christmas waiting. And his whole household. Waiting to get saved. See, some people have to find themselves before they can find Jesus. Oh, you didn't even hear what I said. They're going to run until they run it out. And sometimes what you're running from is yourself. And you got to run into yourself finally and realize you are not enough. And when you realize that, you say, God, I surrender. When the project fails, when the situation don't happen, when the career don't take off, when will the breaking point come? Where you run into him and say, Father, Enough. Father, enough. But Paul said, I've got ministry in me, and my ministry is for somebody that want to hear. You can't make folk hear. I'm looking at this room. You can't make them hear. They want a casual relationship with the Lord, but they want every blessing plan moving. And even when they get blessed, that's what I used to do. That's what I used to do in my, when, when I, at a different stage of my life. I, I, I don't need to do that now. Why? You got a little money? Oh, oh that didn't go over well. I'm sorry. Many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 1.26 what kind of people these were. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Paul said, said, said to the average person that received Jesus, they got it. Acts 18 9 through 11. Paul was, was, was in a tight place. He was down in Corinth. Corinth was literally wearing him out. Because day in and day out, he had to drag through the cities and see the degradation. But he still called to preach. And I want to let you know you have a lesson in here that when it gets tight, and this lesson was for me today, when it gets tight on your life and you say, God, God, you, 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 you got to do this. You got to help. You got to, you, it, it's, it's, it's at a place, you know, you know, because sometimes you question, you say, God, I know you called me to do this, but oh, oh God, this, why, why, why? why? And that's when you get divine help. I want to let somebody know that help is on the way. You get help when you need it. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. He knows where you are. And he knows the level of help you need. Paul got a specific help plan from the Lord right away. This showed me he was in a place. It was a, hey, God. In a rough place in his heart. 
Lord, I know you called me to do this, but my God is tough on me. How much more can I stay? And the Bible says here, now the Lord, this is Acts 18 and 9 through 11. Now the Lord, everybody say, now the Lord. Now the Lord. Come on, come on. Can it get any better than that? Spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. And his first words were, do not be afraid. But speak. Don't be afraid. Look at somebody and tell them, don't be afraid. Turn and tell them, the Lord has a word for you. And he's telling you, don't be afraid. Keep speaking. Come on. Don't be afraid, but speak. Now turn back to him and say, and don't keep silent. See, Paul was getting afraid because violence was a part of, of that city. Not only was every sin aware, but there was, there was disruption. And if you, you talked about it, they, 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 they were subject to jump you. So, so just to, to preach, his very life was being threatened day in and day out. But Paul wasn't the first person that heard the Lord say, don't be afraid. He told Mary when she was about to deal with what she had to deal with. Don't be afraid. So I come to tell somebody today, don't be afraid. Don't keep silent. And don't shut up. Are y'all getting this today? Yes. So you want to back up, but he don't want you to back up. He wants you to go for. Don't be. Afraid. Don't let nobody shut you up. No. <laughs> but speak. Yes. Tell them from the rooftop, Jesus said. And in the valley, he says, on Prostitution Avenue, Jesus says. On Homosexual Boulevard, Jesus says. You stop judging them and tell them. Your condemnation of their sin is not what God called you to do. He called you to tell them what I've sent to help them and that Jesus says. Yes, yes, yes. What did he call you to do? My God, excuse me. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. Here's the best part, for I am with you. I'm with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you. What a promise. But Paul needed to hear that. No one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. Don't, don't get crazy because I got oh you don't see them but I got many people in this city <laughs> just when they raise their hand some of them people going to show up I don't know whether they were angelic or what but he, if God said it he meant it he said, he said don't be afraid don't shut up don't keep silent but speak because somebody ought to put their hands together and get out. <laughs> a 
And just so you'll get the double insurance policy that I'm with you, notice that I got many people in this city. Yeah. <laughs> Turn and holler at somebody, you got help in this city. My God, give them a praise in here. <laughs> You got help in here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Come. Just when you thought you were all by yourself. <laughs> it may look like. <laughs> but I'm surrounded by you. Yes. Jesus, you'll fight my battle. It just looked like I'm surrounded. But I got help. I mean, hey, my help just came on. I got help in this. <laughs> May look like you don't have it, but you got help. And you don't even know, have to know where they are. They're in the city. They're close enough by to get to you. Before they raise their hand to Rose, let me have this. Before they get to you, just when they about to grab you, a hand swooshes in. Because I got many people. In this city. And the reason why he had to have people in the city. The reason why he had to have the covering of the Lord. And the promise of the Lord. Is because he had to minister there. Until the church was established. And folk were saved. And Paul stayed there in, in Corinth. Another year and a half. In that environment. And won many people of that city over. So when he left. He had many more people. Blessings to you today. <laughs> Come on, give him a good praise in this house if you know you got help. You got help today. If you heard us minister today, give Jesus Christ your life. He loves you. He loves you. If you have a call on your life and they won't hear you shake the dust, move next door. Because there may be a leader of another group of people there, him and his family, waiting to get saved. Right next door in Justice's house, next door to the synagogue. Trust God to do what he said he would do. Be with you. And then assure you that he has many people in that city to help you. Repeat after me. If you want to give your life to the Lord, Father in Jesus' name. I repent of sin and I give you my life. I believe today, Jesus, that you suffered and died on the cross and that Thursday morning you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved. Come into my heart forever. Amen. If you made that kind of decision, find a good church. We're a good one. Dove Church, 4660 Military Street. At the corners of the broader streets of Livinois and Michigan Avenue. Write us. 
Let us know you received the Lord Jesus Christ today. Look us up on the internet. Just find us. We're there. When you see the bald head man with the shiny head, you, you know you're at the right place. Just believe God today. We love you. Blessings to you. Come on, give God a praise for him. Praise the Lord to all of our viewers. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.